What's going on guys? Indy here with Ultimate Tool Reviews and this is a tool that I've wanted to upgrade to for quite a while. Uh, this is going to be the Gen 2 Makita XGT reciprocating saw. Now it's been out for over a year now. Unfortunately in the US we're not able to get it right when they release. I know Tools and Stuff had the first review on it and it did phenomenal. And he actually compared it up against the 36 volt version of the LXT, the Metabo HPT 36 volt version, and the Gen 1 reciprocating saw. And of course you saw that review, the Gen 2 just dominated. It did an amazing job. It's clearly the best reciprocating saw that Makita has ever Ever released to date. Now I've had the Gen 1 since it was available in the US. I bought it off Amazon. I've done a number of videos on this tool. Um, even in my last video where I talked about um, the uh, XGT battery issue that I had, um, I bought it at the same time as part of a kit, but this is the JRJ01. Now this reciprocating saw is actually pretty basic. There's not a lot to it. You really only have two speed settings. Of course you got the rafter hook as well. Um, but I've put this thing through a lot of job sites. It's been fantastic. Definitely the most powerful reciprocating saw that I currently own, but not the most feature packed. Well, when Makita made the Gen 2, which is right here, and it's also quite heavy, they added some more features to it that was missing on a lot of reciprocating saws. Now, I don't know why Makita has always shied away from the orbital action. I don't, I don't know if they've really done many other reciprocating saws with orbital action. Seems like brands like um, Milwaukee and Metabo seem to do that on a lot of their saws. Now, this reminds me actually a lot of the M18 Fuel. I think the Super has this, where right up here we've got the different speed setting, which is really cool. And this button I've always thought was absolutely horrible because you seem to bump it a lot and it never really is super stable. It's, you know, pretty easy to bump and hit, hit and accidentally lock the tool out again. This is actually a bit of improvement over that because it's not as easy to bump this part as it was on the JR1. Now I do like that a lot and the speed settings are not here either. It's just a lock and unlock. Speed settings are now moved to here, so that's fantastic. But I feel like a lot of the other reviewers missed a lot of the really cool stuff about this tool. So let's get in closer and I'll show you some of the details that I saw that were missed. All right, putting these two tools side by side. Now, one thing that you notice on the newer JR2 is gonna be the AVT or anti-vibration technology. I'll get to that in just a second. But one thing I noticed right away from pulling this tool out of the box is on the original version, they have this isolation part here where it isolates the battery from the rest of the tool. It's very commonly seen on larger impact wrenches because there's so much vibration in that tool. Notice though on the Gen 2, that part is now missing. This is all just one solid piece. And my first thought was, wow, they must have really fixed the vibration uh, vibrations here. And boy, are you right. They definitely have fixed a lot of vibrations. On the Metabo HPT 36 volt saw, that thing is just terrible when it comes to vibration. Um, that thing is the worst saw I've used when it comes to just, you know, vibrating your hands off when you're trying to cut anything. There is so much vibration on that saw. This is definitely not great either. It's got a ton of vibration, but at least it does protect the battery in a way there. All right, so to show you how much vibration we have on these saws, I'm just gonna clip in a bottle of Gatorade that is partially empty, so there's more air in there. And you can see just how much this bottle of Gatorade will vibrate, the liquid inside there will vibrate. I wanna have it on speed two for you and check this out. All right, so, of course we saw a ton of vibration there with the Gen 1. Now I'm gonna put the Gen 2 in its max speed, speed five. Um, we're gonna try with the exact same battery. So of course there's no blade in here. Let's see how much it does on the, on the Gatorade bottle as well. It's a considerable decrease in vibration. It's super noticeable. I will give Makita that. It's not like, oh, it's slightly less vibration. And I will say it is a bit quieter too, which is quite interesting. Um, going from the Gen 1 to the Gen 2. If you can hear that on my mic a little bit, it makes a very loud, almost kind of like a very high pitched kind of squeal when it's running, which has done that since day one. It hasn't changed at all. Whereas the Gen 2 sounds a bit more kind of mean to it, but it has a much quieter tone to the motor there. 
All right, one thing I always thought was a little strange too, when you went to the Gen 2, it's not necessarily strange, but it makes sense when you know that the Gen 2 has orbital action. Now, of course, that makes the motor and some of the gearing assembly here a bit larger. So the Gen 1 is on my left. You can see that it tapers off right here, down here, but the Gen 2 stays pretty thick here, actually going all the way up. Now, there's only one disadvantage that I found to that, and that's gonna be right down here. I can't, I can get my hand around it, but it definitely kind of, you know, it kind of pulls up on the back of my hand it kind of pushes in there it's not a huge you know handle grip area but if I'm wearing gloves holding this tool I don't really have a lot of space like I do with the gen 1 it's not really a downside it's just a little bit more of a less ergonomics there on the gen 2 compared to the gen 1 and finally the gen 2 is actually just a bit shorter I would say half an inch shorter than the gen 1 it's not a massive difference, but it's interesting to note though that the Gen 2 is a bit shorter. All right, now let's talk weight. Of course, that's gonna be an important factor when it comes to reciprocating saws. So the Gen 1, let's see here how much this thing weighs. They are definitely not light reciprocating saws by any means. We're at seven pounds, 13.4 ounces on the Gen 1. Yep, I figured it'd definitely be heavier when you add in the orbital action there, so. 8 pounds, 10.8 ounces, so basically an additional pound to the saw. If that matters to you, that's definitely a difference there. All right, so let's make some cuts. I got a fully charged 5 amp hour battery, which is one of the best batteries to use for the XGT tools. It has tons and tons of power and will really give these tools the best shot at posting their best times. So this is the first generation, of course, is no orbital. So I'm just gonna do three cuts through a treated four x four. I'll then average the times for you and that'll give us a good baseline. Then we'll do the gen two. So as you can tell, the Gen 1 has tons of power, but it's one weakness of course, you know, it's got a ton of vibration. That's very common as you gain more and more power in a reciprocating saw, you put on a ton of vibration. So let's move on to the Gen 2. All right, so I got the Gen 2 now. We're gonna be on the top speed here. I'm using the exact same blade and exact same battery as the Gen 1. Notice how much less vibration we're gonna see um, when we cut through this, four, this four x four here. So I'm gonna do three cuts with the um, orbital action off, and then I'll do three cuts with orbital action on. Let's go orbital action on. Alright, so it's no doubt that the Gen 2 is definitely a serious upgrade from the Gen 1. But of course, I'm just doing a review here. I want to also let you guys know that, hey, is it worth an upgrade or not worth an upgrade from the Gen 1? I think that's the most important part to gain from this video. Of course, you know, I can talk all the praises I want about the Gen 2 as a review, but is it worth an upgrade from the Gen 1? Well, I think so, but I don't think it's worth it at the price point that it's currently at. And for what you can get for each of these tools for a kit, now I will say the pricing is high, yes, <laughs> especially in the kit. This thing is over $500 in the kit, but that's not the whole story. I was using a five amp hour battery for this test. And to run this tool effectively for say half a day, you're gonna want of course a charger and at least two five amp hour batteries, if not more. So effectively for this tool to run this on batteries, we're looking at six to $700. That's pretty steep, yeah, that's pretty expensive. Now the Gen 1 is five to $600 around that price point when you add in additional batteries to it, maybe even a little bit less depending on what you get it for. So is it worth the upgrade to this? 
if you want to spend the money on it, yeah, I think so. Now, Makita did send me the Gen 2, and they told me just do a review on it and have fun, but would I buy with my own money? Yeah, but I'd wait for a sale on it. It's definitely worth it when it comes to performance, but the pricing, I think, is just very prohibitive um, just based on other competition out there. The M18 fuels are much cheaper. The DeWalt's are a lot cheaper. Um, I mean, when it comes to the XGT line, the batteries are expensive, the charger are expensive, the tools are expensive, and there's not a lot of deals out there. That's the only real downside to the Gen 2, in my opinion, is getting the batteries you need to run this, getting the charger you need to run this, and additional supportive tools to run this as well, like say an XGT vacuum or a drill at impact, they're all quite expensive. So that's the one downside of this tool. But if money is no object, yes, this tool is definitely worth the upgrade to the Gen 2. Vibration is significantly decreased. You have much more options when it comes to modes, giving you a slower speed if you need to go for a slower speed. Definitely when you're doing metal, you wanna slow the blade down so it doesn't overheat and keep breaking the teeth. That's very common. Whenever I cut metal with my Sawzall, which I do a ton, I always keep that nice and slow so I'm not melting those blades and damaging those teeth. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about before I end the video is orbital action. I'm not hugely sold on orbital action. Um, basically what it does is a saw or a reciprocating saw does this to cut any material. Orbital action adds in an additional motion there. And the reason for that is because that it's moving the debris out of the way. It's really only effective for wood um, because there's so many chips that form there. When you look at a look at a blade like this, this is going to be for design for metal. Because when you're cutting metal, those chips are very small and fine and they like to kind of fling right out of the way for you. However, when you're doing wood, the chips like to stick around. They like to maybe clump together, maybe bunch together. So that's why the teeth are a bit more aggressive on a wood blade. So when you add an orbital action, you are now clearing away those chips and kind of trying to push those away faster. That's often why orbital action will help you go through wood slightly faster. Now, am I a big fan of orbital action? I think it's okay. I haven't really ever seen any real world use of it where I'm actually seeing significantly faster results. Um, I use it for, you know, cutting up 6x6s six and 8x8s eight when I need to, um, taking down larger decks. Yeah, it might see some use there, but is it useful for 89% of the time? You're going to actually see realistic differences in it because the trade-off with orbital action is you're going to get a bit more vibration in the tool and you're also going to cause a bit more wear and tear due to the internal components of the tool as you add that additional motion there. So it's really up to you. but. For me personally, I don't necessarily look for orbital action. I kind of see why Makita is maybe straight away from it a little bit is because that it's just not super worth it. Um, I mean, if you just were to turn it on or off randomly and would you be able to notice that cutting most of the time? I doubt it. Um, I keep mine off the majority of the time no matter what material I'm going through. Uh, if you're going through like metal, it can get a little annoying at times because it starts to jump the blade a little bit as well too. So you might notice it when you have metal and you gotta turn that off so you're not jumping the blade around. That's kind of just my two cents there. So is the Gen 2 worth it? Yeah, like I said before though, it's if money's not a factor and you just want the most powerful, baddest tool out there, yeah, go with the Gen 2. So guys, that's all I've got for you today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know any questions you guys got about XGT, the Gen 2, love to talk about that. So guys, take care, stay safe out there and have a great day.